Welcome back. You were gone for quite some time. Well, did you find it? What... what was it like, coming to the urn, I mean? Tests? Interesting. Perhaps my research will not seem so much like blasphemy to the Chantry now. We must organize an expedition. There is so much history here, it must be studied. And... and pilgrims should be allowed to come to the urn. But the urn belongs to all the faithful. You have noble intentions, Brother Genitivi. But can you say the same of your brethren in the Chantry? I wish people wanted to share me more often. Especially the ladies. I want more ladies to share me. <laughs> I will spread this good news or die trying. I must return home. I am not a rich man, but I have a small collection of interesting artifacts. I hope to see you soon, my friend. As you say. You return. Might you have news? You have? Wonderful. Let us go at once to Eamon's side and see if the urn's healing powers live up to their reputation. You have been deathly ill for a very long time. Do you remember nothing? Tegan? What are you doing here? Where is Isolde? I am here, my husband. And Connor? Where is my boy? Where is our son? He lives. Though many others are dead. There is much to tell you, husband. Dead? Then... it was not a dream. Much has happened since you fell ill, brother. Some of it will not be... easy for you to hear. Then tell me. I wish to hear all of it.
This is most troubling. There is much to be done, that is true. But I should first be thankful to those who have done so much. Grey Warden, you have not only saved my life, but kept my family safe as well. I am in your debt. Will you permit me to offer you a reward for your service? I understand, but regardless of your motivations, I feel you are worthy of a reward. I would like to honor your efforts, nothing more. Then allow me to declare you and those traveling with you champions of Redcliffe. And for you, Warden, a shield of the same make as those that have been given to our finest knights. We should speak of Loghain, brother. There is no telling what he will do once he learns of your recovery. Loghain instigates a civil war even though the Darkspawn are on our very doorstep. Long I have known him, he is a sensible man, one who never desired power. I was there when he announced he was taking control of the throne, Eamon. He is mad with ambition, I tell you. Mad indeed. Mad enough to kill Caelan, to attempt to kill myself and destroy my lands. Whatever happened to him, Loghain must be stopped. What's more, we can scarce afford to fight this war to its bitter end. I could unite those opposing Loghain, yes. But not all oppose him. We have no time to wage a campaign against him. Someone must surrender if Ferelden is to have any chance at fighting the Darkspawn. I agree. Loghain will pay for his heinous crimes. I will spread word of Loghain's treachery, both here and against the King. Those claims will give Loghain's allies pause, but we must combine it with a challenge Loghain cannot ignore. We need someone with a stronger claim to the throne than Loghain's daughter, the Queen. Are you referring to Alistair, brother? Are you certain? I would not propose such a thing if we had an alternative, but the unthinkable has occurred. Tegan and I have a claim through marriage, but we would seem opportunists no better than Loghain. Alistair's claim is by blood. And what about me? Does anyone care what I want? You have a responsibility, Alistair. Without you, Loghain wins. I... B but I... No, my lord. I see only one way to proceed. I will call for a landsmeet, a gathering of all of Ferelden's nobility in the city of Denerim. There, Ferelden can decide who shall rule, one way or another. Then the business of fighting our true foe can begin. What say you to that, my friend? I do not wish to proceed without your blessing. Very well, but before we proceed, I believe there is the matter of the mage, my son's tutor. He still lives, I understand. He does. He is in the dungeon, brother. Have him brought here, Tegan. I wish to see him. Jowan, what you have done is not in question. You tried to assassinate me and set into motion a series of events that nearly destroyed everything I cherish. What have you to say in your own defense? Nothing, my lord. Other than to say I am sorry. I expect no mercy for what I have done. I see. Grey Warden, have you anything to say on Jowan's behalf? You damn him with faint praise, I see. Then there is nothing more to say. Jowan, I hereby sentence you to death. May the Maker show you the mercy we cannot. Thank you, my lord. Now, back to the matter of the landsmeet. We should head to Denerim as soon as possible. I would prefer not giving Loghain time to consider, but it is up to you. I do not wish to go to Denerim unless you are with me. Excellent. I shall make the arrangements. Denerim is the heart and soul of Ferelden. It was the city of King Kalanhad, the birthplace of Andraste. As stubborn as a Mabari, and as good to have on your side. If we defeat Loghain here, the rest of the nation will follow us. By calling the Landsmeet, I've struck the first blow. The advantage, for the moment, is ours. He will have little choice but to show himself. 
to oppose us directly. He will strike back at us. The only question that remains is how soon. Logan, this is an honor that the Regent would find time to greet me personally. How could I not welcome a man so important as to call every lord in Ferelden away from his estates while a blight claws at our land? The blight is why I'm here. With Caelan dead, Ferelden must have a king to lead it against the Darkspawn. Ferelden has a strong leader. It's queen. And I lead her armies. Ah, the Grey Warden recruit. I thought we might meet again. You have my sympathies on what happened to your order. It is unfortunate that they chose to turn against Ferelden. You should curb your tongue. This is my city, and no safe place to speak treason. For anyone. There is talk that your illness left you feeble, Eamon. Some worry that you may no longer be fit to advise Ferelden. Illness? Why not call your poison by its true name? Not everyone at the Landsmeet will cast aside their loyalties as easily as you and these sycophants. How long you've been gone from court, Eamon? Don't you recognize Rendon Howe, Arl of Amaranthine, and Terran of High Ever? And current Arl of Denerim, since Urien's unfortunate fate at Ostagar, the Regent has been generous to those who prove loyal. Don't interrupt, Churl. Your betters are talking. Enough, Carthian. This is not the time or place. I had hoped to talk you down from this rash course, Eamon. Our people are frightened. Our king is dead. Our land is under siege. We must be united now if we are to endure this crisis. Your own sister, Queen Rowan, fought tirelessly to see Ferelden restored. Would you see her work destroyed? You divide our nation and weaken our efforts against the Blight. Your selfish ambitions to the throne. I should put my faith in untried foreign hands. Do you think I'm blind? Kalen depended on the Grey Warden's prowess against the Darkspawn, and look how well that ended. Let us speak of reality rather than tall tales. Stories will not save us. I cannot forgive what you've done, Logain. Perhaps the Maker can. But not I. Our people deserve a king of the Theron bloodline. Alistair will be the one to lead us to victory in this blight. Oh, is that all I have to do? No pressure. The Emperor of Orlais also thought I could not bring him down. Expect no more mercy than I showed him. There is nothing I would not do for my homeland. Well, that was bracing. I didn't expect Loghain to show himself quite so soon. My sister married King Merrick while he was still in exile. At that time, he and Loghain were inseparable. The wild prince who'd never seen the inside of a castle and the farmer's son. When Loghain joined Merrick's rebels, he was just a raw-boned boy, but he got on one knee to swear that he would see Ferelden free, or die trying. And conspires with a blood mage to poison me. It, I would never have believed he would do anything but what was best for Ferelden. We need eyes and ears in the city. Loghain has been here for months. Go have a look around, and see what you can turn up. Better yet, find the nobles who have arrived for the landsmate. When you're ready to talk strategy, come upstairs to my sitting room.
You have excellent. A fine gift. You have my thanks. Generous gift. Thank you ever so much. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. I've said. For now. Does it wish me to leave? I can, though I see no reason to go. No doubt. Without me... Perhaps we should continue. You know, I could get to like this. The last time I came to Denerim, I stayed at an inn so filthy the bedbugs had fleas. What say you? This is a nice chain. Yes? Denerim is Ferelden's most important city, yes? She is Ferelden's heart. Her walls are strong. I hope all the accommodations are to your liking, Warden. It has begun. Please let me know if anything is troubling you. So many visitors, so many chamber pots to clean. Oh. It... If they keep tracking mud up here, it's going to take a month to get it all out. This is a nice estate, isn't it? What's on your mind? I try not to dwell too much on the mistakes of my past, of which there are many. I would go quite mad if I did that. But I do have one regret, the greatest misstep of my life, made even more grave because it had dire consequences for someone else. Years ago, I was assigned as mentor to a lad, Anaren. He was my first apprentice. Anaren was an elf, raised in one of the elven alienages, and he was very mistrustful of humans, especially humans in authority. All he knew of the humans was what he had seen in the alienage. He was very wary of us. What Anaren needed was time. Time to get used to his new home. Time to emerge from his shell, so we could build a rapport. I gave him no such time. I was young and arrogant. He is a mage, I thought. He needs to grow up and act like one. I expected too much from him, too quickly. I gave no consideration to his origin or his feelings, and he retreated further from me. All I could think of was how stubborn he was, how he was throwing away all his talent and his potential, just to be difficult. Oh, I dread to think. I was a harsh taskmistress. He might have thought I was a demon in disguise. You cannot plant crops in the cold, wintry ground. You cannot teach a student who is closed off and unresponsive. Patience is what is needed. And I learned that too late to help him. Anaren ran away from the circle one night. I had berated him over some trivial, ridiculous matter that I no longer remember. I drove him away because of something utterly unimportant. He was a child, 14 at the time of his leaving. They had his phylactery, and they hunted him down.
They called him Maleficar, a mage who practices forbidden magic, deserving of death. He was a child, misunderstood and lost. I begged the Templars to tell me if he suffered, if they gave him a quick death. I got no answers from them. I was his mentor, and they wouldn't even tell me what became of him. I should have known better. I had the best mentors. They were kind, compassionate. Why didn't I learn from them? I failed in Aaron. All I had to do was listen to him. He would try to talk to me, and I would tell him to concentrate on his spells. He talked about the alienage sometimes, and the Dalish. He always talked about looking for the Dalish elves. The Templars are well-trained and thorough. That he still lives, it would be a vain hope. The apprentices that came after Aneren benefited greatly from the lessons I learned from him. In a sense, he was my teacher, and I his student. And there it is. My story, my one greatest regret. What you need? What about? Oh, sure. I'm fine with it. I mean, she was a real firebrand between the sheets, but a bit soft in the skull, you know what I mean? Explains why she left, anyway. Handling what? Bronca? <laughs> That treasure's been long buried. Ancestors, take me. You people whine like tea kettles around here. <clears throat> what you need? What about? What? Miss Orzammar? Are you mad, in addition to being ugly? <laughs> they treated me like a puddle fly back there. All right. Hi. If one more servant asks if I would like a change of clothes, I will set the house on fire. I await your command. We are hardly alone, so privacy is not an option. It is your question, however. This is not as defensible. Yes. Speak, then. Then 
I suggest we move on. As you wish. It has begun. Ah, Warden. I trust you've made yourself comfortable. Good. This is Elena. She's... I am Queen Enora's handmaiden. Or perhaps the young lady prefers to speak for herself. The Queen. She's in a difficult position. She loved her husband, no? She worries, no? But when she tries to speak with him, he does not answer. He tells her not to trouble herself. My Queen suspects she cannot trust her father. And Logan, he is very subtle, no? So she goes to how? A visit from the Queen to the new Isle of Denrum is only a matter of courtesy. And she demands answers. He calls her every sort of name, traitor being the kindest, and locks her in a guest room. King Kaelin was like a son to him, and Logan left him to die. I think her life is in danger. I heard how say she would be a greater ally dead than alive, especially if her death could be blamed on Arl Eamon. Yes, that is what she hoped he would say. We may have no choice but to trust Anora. I'm not sure that's a risk we can afford to take. I have some uniforms. I will show you to the servants and friends. I will go ahead to House Estate. I haven't been here in a while. They've changed the dining room. Something on your mind? Yes, me too. And I got the feeling at the end there that it saw us. Was, could have just been my imagination, I suppose. What do you think? I thought we were already being extra careful. I guess one thing is certain, at least, isn't it? It's official. This is a blight. <laughs> <laughs> 